Gravity is not a real force at all. Objects just free fall towards the greatest energy because it has the greatest time dilation or the slowest rate the time flows. This theory takes the dynamic interactive process of the general theory of relativity and extends it to our everyday life, explaining a universe that is continuously coming into existence relative to the energy and momentum of our own actions. Every individual is a part of this interactive process. Are you saying the map is wrong? Oh dear, yes. Uh, look at Greenland. Okay. Now look at Africa. Okay. The two land masses appear to be roughly the same size. Yes. Would it blow your mind if I told you that Africa is in reality 14 times larger? Yes. Here we have Europe drawn considerably larger than South America when it's 6.9 million square miles, South America is almost double the size of Europe's 3.8 million. Alaska appears three times as large as Mexico when Mexico is larger by 0.1 million square miles. Germany appears in the middle of the map when it's in the northernmost quarter of the Earth. Wait, wait, relative size is one thing, but you're telling me that Germany isn't where we think it is? Nothing is where you think it is. See, here is the sea, Mr. Sanders, so calm and apparently unchanging. And yet, uh, it is part of my new conception about the nature of the world at this same sea. Many times in the past, history of our Earth has rolled over the surfaces of the land masses, sweeping away all life and vegetation, and eventually turning again to its former bed. This is the uh, part of the biblical theory of the flood and uh, the theory of people of other races. Oh yes, this uh, actual ever. Now the reporter giving the interview just said that like it was a known theory at this the time. The uh, part of the biblical theory of the flood and uh, the theory of people of other races. Oh yes, this uh, actual event, the last one is recorded in all the sacred scriptures of all the old civilizations from the Hindus to the Bible. You've made a number of predictions, scientific predictions, which you claim have come true. Now, what are those predictions, and how do you make this claim? Well, they are all based on the new notion that the physical invariance principles of contemporary science are invalid. And I stated this first in a manuscript reviewed in Australia in 1954. And uh, the val validity of this statement was confirmed finally last year at Princeton when the principle of time reversal invariance was found to be invalid. Well, who accepts the fact that you have made these predictions accurately? Well, the facts as such are undeniable and must be accepted because they're documented and it was accepted as such at Oxford, at the Tasmanian University and also at uh, the National University. The facts as such are accepted, but the explanations and the new views as yet are not. Do you mean to say that you reject all the basic principles of science established since Aristotle's day? No, it does not mean that. I state and maintain that uh, those concepts and interpretations of science, which are still based today on Aristotelian logic, but these concepts are inadequate for a complete understanding of the real nature of the world.
How is it possible, Mr. Foster, that you as an individual can work out these theories when all the other established scientists have computers and all the money of governments behind them, and yet they apparently can't? Many years ago, about 14 years ago, when I was challenging one of the fundamental conventional principles of science, I had a definite inspiration, not knowledge as such, but uh, an indication and a guidance which I followed on which I worked very hard and to evolve into a new structure of understanding. Inspirations are related to thoughts of genius. Do you think or consider yourself to be a genius? No. I um, consider myself to be an ordinary, humble person who wants to serve mankind with what we, man has striven for from the beginning of consciousness with truth and understanding of the world. Well, now, one thing, you have a theory about the moon, and we expect to be able to get observable facts about the moon fairly soon. Um, what is your theory? Well, uh, it is by now rather more than a theory. Uh, 10 or 11 years ago, I stated to various scientists that the moon is not a piece of rock, but it is a uh, plasma plasma phenomena, cosmic plasma. And that this fact will eventually be confirmed. I made certain predictions which were already confirmed in 1958 and the situation now is coming close to a complete confirmation. What will be the result if you are proved to be correct in your theories? The result will be uh, profound and decisive because it will give proof that a complete re reinvestigation of the laws of nature is necessary. Judgments of right versus wrong, correct versus incorrect, even true versus false are meaningless. Upon this ground for comparing viewpoints, the case can be made that the plasma paradigm is quote higher than the gravity one in that it encompasses a larger domain of evidence. Not only does it explain more phenomena, it explains those phenomena with a comprehensive and unitary theory. It sees more landscape, more features of the landscape, and more relationships among those features. Gravity, in contrast, sees fewer features and sees them as disparate events, each requiring a separate ad hoc explanation. Because if the moon is a plasma, no man will ever land on it. The soft landing attempts will all fail. It's in a different state of energy. It means that if it is proved that the moon is a plasma, then all gravitational theories are out and the new concept of the cosmos and of its laws has to be evolved. Gravity fails to account for entire new observations extrapolating itself beyond reality and into denial. Supermassive stars spinning super fast. Exploding stars whose shock waves create intricate structures. Cannibalistic galaxies. Dark matter that overwhelms observed matter. Photos cropped between galaxies and connected quasars. Silence in the face of the quantization of redshifts, etc more and more evidence is being ignored. Newton was unaware of plasma. Today, his disciples spend years in training, learning when and how to shut their eyes to it. It's not just the Big Bang, general relativity, and quantum mechanics that are in trouble, but the foundation of them all. Gravity is an exhausted and bankrupt concept. A higher, more comprehensive foundation is needed. Aren't you being a bit adventurous, though, because uh, you know that we're going to be able to test out your theories on the moon fairly soon? Well, not anymore. Eleven years ago, uh, of course, uh, it was rather taking a risk. I was considered a lunatic, of course. But by now, the evidence, accumulated evidence, is already so much in my favor that I'm not taking any risks anymore. On the contrary, uh, there is scientific views expressed all over the world now that uh, the moon uh, seems to be of a quite different nature of what was assumed.
the Americans and Russians are thinking of landing men on it. Oh, well, that will never happen. Not on the moon. On Mars, on Venus, and other planets, yes. But the moon is definitely, as I assert, a plasma. Isn't there a slight contradiction? You mentioned the, the moon and the tides, Mr. Foster. And at the earlier part of the interview, you talked about the tides sweeping over the Earth. Well, there is no contradiction there, because once the moon is proven not to be a piece of rock, but something of far less mass, and the gravitational theories are out and discarded, new concepts have to be involved, which will show that the lawfulness of nature in the cosmos is identical to that in a hydrogen atom or in, uh, in, in atomic processes. And when this is understood and worked out in full, it will be found that the physical processes of the Earth are quite different in geophysics of what it is present assumed, and that lawfully in certain periods, mostly during the ice ages, which occur every 200 million years, and there is a reason for that, the axis of the Earth suddenly tilts over. And when this happens, then you get the floods of the Bible, which were recorded before. The tides, the ordinary everyday tides, tides have an explanation, even if the moon had almost no mass at all, because they are field effects. They are induced by cosmic pressures which exist in the field of our solar system. At present we have a glaring contradiction in the assertions of fundamental science. that there is a moral law in the universe on which we, in which we partake and which is binding on us and which is decisive on our future. Now, in the practical aspects, when it is understood that the geophysical laws are quite different and that this uh, tipping over of the Earth axis has occurred often, suddenly in the past and will occur again, if the new view is elaborated, and I will not live long enough anymore to do that, it will be understood that the speed of light is not a universal constant, as it is now the foundation of science, that is changeable. And that perhaps 50 years before the next change of axis, there will be an increase in the speed of light. And if scientists will work out why and how, then there will be sufficient warning that mankind can prepare itself. Instead of building atom bomb shelters and hydrogen bombs by the millions, we will build provisions of uh, making humanity floatable and to survive uh, this crisis. It comes again to the age-old concept that truth is the guidance, the hope and the directive of the human mind and that man must strive to understand and to know the real nature of the world. The technologies of gravity have lifted us to a viewpoint that's bigger than gravity, and we need new ideas and new tools to make sense of the new vistas. Newton's apple does not fall to the ground because of the downward force of gravity, but because of the upward momentum of electromagnetic radiation or light. Gravity is not a real force at all. It is a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. Objects just free fall towards the greatest energy because it has the slowest rate of time or the greatest time dilation.